We're currently one in three in the WBG and is probably one of the most experienced people in the league. Not the very most, but I'm up there in terms of VGC experience. It's not a great look to be one in three, especially when most of my losses have been to singles players. But today we're taking on Jacob as always and the Green Bay Pikachus and I'm looking to redeem the season today. I think that we have a team that can do it and I feel like I've finally gotten out of my nice building tilt. So hopefully you guys enjoy and if you do and you wanna see more content like this, of course, like and subscribe on the video as I hope to bring you guys some more interesting VGC draft content in the future and I like to see that you guys enjoy it as well. With that said though, let's get into Jacob's team, which actually went through a bit of a revision. And I'm gonna be honest, I helped Jacob with a lot of these free agents. I think it made his team a lot better, but then I realized I have no line into Namorous Incarnate. That mon screws over my entire team, especially with Roaring Moon, and I think the duo of them will be very terrifying today. They also have a Scizor, Milotic, Sinistral, Arcanine, Palmot, Riolu, and Rhydon, and there's not really a Pokemon here that I fully expect to be benched this game. I think all nine Pokemon have genuine merit here, and Jacob's a very creative builder. While he's not the most versed in VGC by any means, and probably actually has the least amount of experience of everyone in the league, he's a very creative drop builder, and I know he has some good heads helping him out with his prep and overall, just his season as a whole. And he's someone who has enough game skill to where he could easily just find something that can beat my team, such as my not great matchup into ground types, especially Rhydon being that slow, and just steamroll with it. So I'm kind of anticipating either like a Trick Room route with Rhydon to beat me with some sort of defensive Terra or like a Tailwind route with Enamorous to beat me. Scizor will probably come on both teams. I think it's a good Mon Sword Dance here with some sort of defensive Terra like Dragon. And that's about as much as I'm expecting versus Jacob personally. With our first Pokemon here, we have an Ogre Pond Hearth Flame with Ivy Cudgel, Follow Me, Woodhammer, and Spiky Shield. This is just standard Ogre Pond. We're going to be creeping all the way up through any relevant speed tier. I believe this creeps up to Enamorous, and it should hopefully help a lot with this matchup because honestly, Jacob's team is fucking terrifying, and I just need a Mon that can click Terrifier, Ivy Cudgel, and just hit through everything. So we're going to try and just break through Jacob's team as quickly as possible. To help with this, we do have an Iron Bundle here with the Icy Wind, Ice Beam, Hydro Pump, and Protect with Terra Ghost. Terragos is going to be greater on fake out, and with my 189 speed, we're going to creep booster speed Roaring Moon here. Meanwhile, Ice Beam will guarantee the KO into Enamorous while still allowing me to run booster speed here. I decided to give up the coverage in a Milotic, as I don't think that Jacob will anticipate that I'll just ditch freeze dry against one of the most prolific bulky waters of all time. So I'm going to try and run with that and hopefully take advantage of my other offensive pieces to instead break the Pokemon. If that doesn't work, I might be kind of screwed against a really bulky Milotic, but I don't think that Jacob will play it in a way to where he'll assume I just don't have freeze dry until it becomes too late. So I'm going to kind of bank off of that and hope that I can maybe at best at least win me one match. Moving on though, we do have Sula Mio, our King Gambit with Lumberry this week, as I wanted to avoid burns from things like Milotic and Arcanine, and Sinisha as well. Like the whole Firewater Grass score is very burn heavy, and I did not want to get burned. I also didn't want to run Terra Fire though, because it was a really bad defensive typing here. But Terra Dark is at least still pretty good into most of the team, just not the NAM Scizor core. Uh, but with Kowtow, Sucker Punch, Iron Head, and Protect, I have a pretty good matchup into most of this team. My speed is allowing me to make sure that I can creep any sort of attack boosting Roaring Moon with Tailwind up, and that should hopefully help a lot with King Gambit's offensive matchup. Defiant will be great as well, because while I think that Jacob might bench Intimidate, I also don't want to not bring King Gambit with Defiant, because if, let's say, Jacob does go with Intimidate Arcanine, and I don't prep non-Defiant King, well, if I do prep, like, Supreme Overlord King Gambit, I can get kind of screwed there, because I don't really have any other pieces that can block Intimidate this week, because I decided to only make King Gambit my counterplay to Intimidate. Well, actually, I have one other Pokemon, but I'll get into that in a bit. It's not meant to be an offensive Pokemon, though, it just can coincidentally get around Intimidate. Moving on, though, we do have Clefable with Rocky Helmet, Terra Steel. And this should be a great piece around most of Jacob's offense, as it's great at drawing in things like Terra, Flying, Acrobatics, Roaring Moon, most Scizor hits, because I don't think Scizor will go for a fighting move directly into Clefable, and also like an Amorous Springtide Storms, which should be pretty valuable. With Follow Me, Dazzling Gleam, Helping Hand, and Flamethrower, this should hit most of Jacob's team for really good damage, and I just have Max Fizz Death, because really this is only checking the physical offense. It's meant to check things like Moon and Scizor, and that's about it, and I'm kind of fine with that. That's all I really needed to check, it's just like the Moon in the Scizor, because this is mostly going to be benefiting my next Pokemon being my Loaded Dice, Swords Dance, Terra Poison, Garchomp. Now this is definitely my win con this week for sure. And with Swords Dance, Scale Shot with Loaded Dice, I should be able to at plus two eviscerate almost everything on Jacob's team, even if I'm only hitting four times. The Scale Shot is mostly here to hit the four times because it will hit harder than Dragon Claw, which is actually very important for a lot of damage rolls against things like Milotic. As I can get up to a 96% on my minerals here. Meanwhile, the Roaring Moon gets completely KO'd. I can KO the Arcanine pretty confidently with like a Stomping Tantrum, and I can really blow back most of Jacob's offense with this combination. I'm only deciding to creep through the really slow end of Pokemon here, just because of the fact that I don't really value a lot of speed on Garchomp, and Jacob's speed tiers are kind of weird, so I, I can't really creep things like, for example, the Enamorous, because it's going to just barely outpace me, and 
really, I mean, a lot of Jacob's speed tiers kind of die off after that. I don't think Arcanine really runs a lot of speed, so I only went for like an aggressive creep on Arcanine creeping my slower end, and that was about all I went for. But it should still be fine for any relevant speed tiers in Tailwind. I'll creep through like all the way up to Scarf and Amorous, and I'll be kind of good. So overall, the Garchomp will kind of just completely cook through Jacob's team, especially after I get up a scale shot, which will creep through any non-booster speed or Scarf Pokemon at plus one. Finally, though, we do have Fukuru, our Kilowattril. This is the other Pokemon that like technically pressures Intimidate, but it, like realistically, it's not doing a lot of offensive work here. And I don't anticipate to bring Kilowattril unless we go to game three as an offensive Pokemon at least, but there are lines I can make this work as a damage breaker. With Thunderbolt, Air Slash, Tailwind, and Protect, this is just meant to match Jacob's speed because Jacob will probably go for Tailwind as a game one lead against me, and maybe game three. I think there will be a route for Trick Room, though. I'm very much anticipating a Trick Room route. I just don't know if he'll lead it. Uh, but this should creep any sort of booster speed Roaring Moon, or at least an attack boosting Roaring Moon at max speed, I should say. And then we could potentially use Thunderbolt and Air Slash just as good damage options. The runout code's gonna be on screen here with the team in the description below in case you guys wanna try it out yourselves. Should hopefully be a good match, and I'm hoping to rebound finally against Jacob. I think that we can do it, and I think this build is strong enough. And with that said we'll see you guys in the matches all right we're here i have finally stopped giving away my terra types and items or miscorrectly giving away my terra types because that that would be bad if i did it for three weeks in a row now where i fucked up on the terror reveal i made sure to do it right we're taking on my good pal jacob i've known jacob for years way way too long to be honest i've known him for way too long for how little we interact um, so I was really glad that we got to get Jacob in this league. I don't really think I've played Jacob that often in draft for how long I've known him. Uh, everyone else I've known about that long, I've played at least probably twice as often. So this will be fun. This will be genuinely fun. Uh, the team he brought is pretty terrifying. I'm really glad too that he took me up on the free agent ideas that I gave him. Because uh, I, th I think it just makes his team a lot better. I mean, if it if it's the reason I lose, because I realized my NAM matchup is really fucking bad after suggesting, hey, you should get a NAM, uh, then that's on me. That's only on me. Um, but it should be, regardless, I, I'm hoping it makes this team a bit better. Uh, we're going to lead off with Clefable and Garchomp. I think Clefable Garchomp gets me the best lead here. Uh, Garchomp is my win con, 100%. I think it's a really strong mon this match. We're going to bring Ogre Pond and King Gambit in the back. I think game one, I'm going to ditch the speed control because I think Garchomp should suffice. And with my follow me users, I feel pretty confident I can just allow the Garchomp to win. It has a really incredible matchup against this team. It's like my one good Mon here, frankly. Uh, and even stuff like Sinistra and Milotic after a Sword Stance really do not want to take it on. If Arcanine is gonna go for the is gonna go for the Intimidate, then that's fine too, because I know for future games that King Gambit and Kilowattro will just snowball through it. So I'm kind of okay with that. Good luck and fun though. Uh, we're gonna see a Nam and Roaring Moon lead. Okay, that's perfectly fine. We get a lot of information already. Turn one about the Roaring Moon. So, Roaring Moon, it looks like we're loading in a booster. Are we loading in a booster? We are loading in a booster. And it is Terra Ghost as well, which is good to know. It is booster speed. Um, game one. All right, perfect. So, that is great for us. We already know exactly what this is going to do, which I'm very okay with that. Um, what I can do, I think that I just go for a Dazzling Gleam this turn. And then I proceed to go for the Terra Poison, mostly to get around the Enam. And then I go for a Sword Sands. I doubt that Enam is going to go for Earth Power right away. Roaring Moon will probably go for Tailwind more likely, and then Enam probably Springtide. Because against this lead, Springtide is a very free click for my opponent. They're going to Terra, and it's going to be the Enam. Terra Stellar. Okay, that's perfectly fine. Um, That's actually really fine, because knowing that Enam is Jacob's Terramon, it was pretty obvious, to be fair, it was this or, like, Arcanine. Uh, because Arcanine is unironically Terra Fairy Arcanine is literally his only check to this mon. And even still have job for it. Um, but like it makes it makes total sense. Uh, thankfully though, Enam still keeps all of its weaknesses, so I'm pretty okay with this. If Jacob goes for Terra Blast on this turn, trying to get a contrary boost, good play. I, I can't lie, I think I might get fucked. I might like really get fucked by that. Um, we do see U-turn for Morning Moon though, which I'm fine with. He's already gotten rid of his Protosynthesis. I don't think Jacob really cares about it on this team for what it's worth. I think Moon more so with the speed boost is meant to clean, but it's good to get rid of it. Like, this is one last thing I gotta worry about. Fuck, he really goes for Terror last turn one. Oh, thank God it's in the Clefable. Okay, I can't lie. I was really terrified for a moment that Enam was about to rail my team. Um, okay. So got the Contrary boost. I'm fine with that. Um, I think from here, I need to go for a rock slide as quickly as possible. 
Uh, Gleam is going to go off. That does some okay damage, actually. I'm fine with that. Uh, the Rock Slide should be nice, though. I'm going to follow me. Um, yeah, I'm going to follow me. Because I can't protect on Garchomp. I need to follow me here. And then I need to go for a Rock Slide. I don't think... Will Scizor kill me? Is this a bad play? I think I kind of need to go for it anyway. Um, and then maybe just hope that Scizor gets cocky. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of my only play. Glyphable is going to die here no matter what. But it's just a matter of if Garchomp's going to die. And frankly, that would only come down to me positioning badly. Perfect. Okay. So we know that Scizor does about 100. That's, um, BP... That's a really important note. I think that's still Technician range. That's probably Bullet Punch. Right, it's definitely Bullet Punch. We don't... I don't think it's an offensive item, but it's definitely, like, strong. Um... Okay, so these are all really important things to note. Uh, the Anam is kind of scary. It is actually really scary, um, but that's fine. We know it's also Life Orb, which is good. Um, and we know it's Contrary. Not that there is doubt that it's Contrary, especially with Stellar Terra. I mean, this was a really obvious ability on Anam when I saw the Terra type, but it, it's not bad to know these things. Uh, the Scizor and Moon now could be kind of a problem. But thankfully, though, I do have Ogre Pond. Um, Roaring Moon's best play around me is probably to go for... I'm trying to think it's probably for breaking swipe this breaking swipe would be kind of a problem um but thankfully though i can just follow me again and then just go for scale shot and that should win me the game um the garchomp will be a huge thing going into this uh, if nothing else is get this a really good game one position and game two i fully expect the arcanine so i do need to kind of change up my position but thankfully game two i can pank off a of king gambit and i think king gambit has an incredible matchup here as well uh this is one of those things where i think that thankfully for once i kind of got out of my habit of prepping really standard and it's gonna help a lot because i prepped a really not good team in my previous couple weeks oh actually i don't know about kurt i think i actually prepped a good team against kurt but i think this is where like bringing stuff outside of the realm of what's usually like the loaded dice on garchomp is gonna really save my ass in game one and this gives me a huge immediate advantage we've gotten a lot of scouting in and i also have a pretty hard mon to check that jacob will have to deem a team around countering and at this point, I cannot lose the match. Milotic should drop. Uh, just to be safe, I'm going to actually dual target Milotic. Because Scizor should be manageable by my backline. Um, is that my play, actually? Yeah, I'm going to go for Wood Hammer and I'm going to go for Rock Slide. I think that combination is my best. Because by going for Rock Slide and get a nice flinch, I can also just kill Scizor, which is great. Um, but yeah, the Wood Hammer plus this should pick off Milotic and that should be game. Um... So, yeah, uh, we, we didn't get a lot of information out of the Milotic. The, the couple of key things, though, that we did get were the Anam set, which, again, it was pretty obvious, but the, knowing that's Life Orb is huge. That means I probably don't actually need to go for Speed Control. Um, instead, I probably just need to go for a Gambit lead. Uh, Gambit lead, I think, will be a lot better position-wise. The bigger piece of information I do get from this turn, though, which is actually really game-changing for us, is knowing the Moon set. The Moon, in particular, could have actually been a lot more terrifying. Um... Well, actually, I don't know about that. I feel like, I mean, knockoff U-turn isn't terrible against my team. Like, this gives it a way to immediately hit me without having to go for Terra or for, like, really weak hits. Um, I don't know. It's not bad. I think, realistically, also, Moon's not a bad pivot for Jacob against my team, actually, thinking out loud, because, like, it's a decent Ogre Pond check, at least conceptually, without play rough. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like there's a lot of things this actually could do by, like, saving it. I think, if anything, maybe just Jacob needs to figure out a different lead, which probably is Arcanine. I feel strongly about an Arcanine lead. So I think that we go with King Gambit now. I think King Gambit is objectively speaking our best lead here. Um, if I was my opponent, I feel like King Gambit Bundle is actually my lead. I know I said I was going to bench the speed control, but I think this is a little bit different of a situation where instead, I think that going with King Gambit Bundle gets me a lot of mileage. If Jacob leads off with, with the Arcanine, I get the Protosynthesis. If Jacob leads off with Moon and Nam again, I also could just Icy Wind it down and just start farming. Well, actually, no, I'd probably Ice Beam the Nam immediately and murder it. And then just go for something on King Gambit like an Iron Head. Uh, and then we're gonna we're gonna probably go with the Ogre Pawn in the back. And then I think Garchomp is my last Mon. I think that's probably my best case. I don't really need Clefable in game two. I think that realistically Ogre Pawn was always my better follow me user. And I think that the board state should allow for this to happen. Um good luck of fun to Jacob though. I'm a little bit worried specifically about a couple things. One, I think Jacob could just go oh hard into Trick Room here. Now, King Gambit isn't terrible against it, but I think it can be overwhelmed. And at that point, if Jacob positions right, the Milotic Scizor duo could maybe be a problem in Trick Room. Uh, it's at least not impossible to beat, but it could put up some good pressure, especially if that's a Sword Dance Scizor. 
Uh, my opponent's gonna lead off with Sinistra Arcanine. Okay, so this actually isn't the worst for my team, but if nothing else, I think I do need to immediately pop Terra on King Gambit. Um, because King Gambit otherwise could get- actually, hold on, I'm Lum King Gambit, right? Do I need to actually proc this? Um, I'm Lum Terra Dark. Okay, so I don't actually need to proc this. I could just go for an attack right away. Actually, that probably would still be Terra, to be fair. Um, so, yeah, I, th I think I just go for the Terra turn one. Do I? I don't know. I feel like Terra Poison Garchomp is actually still a good Terra. We're going to go for Kowtow. We're going to go for it immediately into the Sinistra. And I'm going to go for a Hydro Pump here. I think that's my better set. Now, there's still a lot of things that could happen, to be fair. I feel confident that... Okay, so, so Sinistra does withdraw. Into what, though? Uh, we're going to see Gutty. I forgot the... Uh, okay, that's a Scizor. Okay, I'm fine with that. And then Arcanine's going to go for Terra, actually. Terra Fairy, again, the Terra Fairy Arcanine is a really good set here. I kind of wish I maybe Terra'd my Gambit then. Um, but I thought that Arcanine might not have Terra'd in the situation, just because if I Terra'd Gambit, then it kind of just lost. But to be fair, I mean, really, depending on the set, I, I have no information on Arcanine other than Intimidate. This could have been a play that was actually, like, really necessary to Jacob. Um... Okay, Will-O-Wisp, uh, unfortunate, but it doesn't really impact anything because this was always a situation I got out of cleanly. Um, I'm sure Jacob might be a little bit tilted in the moment, but I I mean, when post-match comes, this doesn't, like, Jacob can't really get anything from this. Um, I think I go for Protect here. I think I go for Protect, yeah. Protect and then Ice Beam should be enough to kill. I want to say Ice Beam is enough to kill. Um, with the team that Jacob brought, I'm fully inclined to believe this is a Trick Room team. I'm very inclined to believe that. Uh, we're gonna go for Protect on Gambit, because I do need Gambit around, knowing how the comp is gonna be. Um, we're gonna see Bullet Punch go off. Ooh, okay, Bullet Punch. I really thought that Jacob might be going for, like, a fighting move and just trying to murder the Gambit at this point. Um, but that's fine, that's fine. Bullet Punch ship isn't a big deal. We've killed the Arcanine, though, which is a- that's a big benefit. We cleared the Wispmon, and right now, we just need to get into a position where- I mean, so they're going to heal up the Scizor, which isn't great. Because Scizor could actually now get off some really good damage. And this is kind of what I was worried about. Oh, no. Jacob's going to go into a Nam. All right. Um, so, thankfully, we have Ice Beam, actually. Specifically for the situation. Um, Yeah. So, we can we can take this out, thankfully. I can go for Kowtow, and I'm going to go for Ice Beam here. Again, specifically, the Ice Beam was for the Enam right here. Because I could not let the Enam fuck me over. It was such a big threat to my team. They're going to go for Protect. Totally fair play, actually. This is a really fair play. Um, because Jacob can get some nice position here with the bullet punch, and that's going to deal some serious damage. Um, perfect. Okay. So, Enam will survive. Um, but thankfully we can guarantee the kill because it's Stellar Terra. Um, in terms of my next option. So, Sinistro will come in. I think Sinistro will probably try and draw in my attack and then let Enam get up a uh, Terra Blast into my bundle. Which is kind of fine. I'm kind of fine letting the Mon drop. Because I think I still do about to it um so we're gonna go for the we're gonna go for the kowtow and i'm gonna go for the ice beam um because again my goal should just be to take out the enamorous they're gonna go for rage powder okay i kind of had to take it um but to be fair the bundle will the bundle will unfortunately die to this but we can at least take out the sinistro with this combination of moves oh okay so i didn't realize that would kill i can't lie i didn't i really didn't realize that would kill um but that's fine i kind of just wish that i went for a iron head here because now Enam might actually fuck my team. Um, we do see superpower as well, which is good information. Alright, um, so yeah, so even with- Oh, right, you know what? This isn't even, like, technically it's already lost its seller. But that's still, honestly, the Mon is still kind of a problem. Um, Ogre Pond is now going to be my way of breaking this. Which, I'm going to hope works. Um, because if not, I might actually lose to Springtide spam. Uh, actually, I don't know if I lose. I think I'm actually guaranteed fine. Um, Jacob- could potentially claim diff though um which i'm fine with i'm, I'm gonna go for terrifier just in case we don't get to see terrifier oh upon a lot and i'm gonna go for it i'm gonna go for it just for the damage because realistically again we just don't see enough of terrifier or lair and terrifier or lair is kind of crazy so we're gonna go for it we're gonna go for it uh terrifier ivy cudgel just just to be sure again because it's not that i think that anam is like you know the bulkiest pokemon in the world but like it's plus one already Jacob could have really bulked this out. We know it's fast, but it could just be like low offense because Anam has naturally high offenses anyway. 
and I just I just have to make sure I know it's a little overkill but I just have to make sure because we're currently in 10th seed and I just need to claw back there um but good game to Jacob I know that I mean we won the set 2-0 but Jacob's team was so fucking terrifying that I had to really counter prep it specifically like the team in mind and thankfully he brought exactly what i thought he'd bring i think if he straight away even a little bit or even just didn't bring like the arcanine for example and brought a different mon instead is his terrifier user i think it would have been a completely different game but that's more so i think just into the fact that i got the call right this week um and i do think that jacob's team is good enough to where as well as jacob as a player is good enough to where once he figures out the forgiveness and like going to week six through eight he'll be a force to be reckoned with and i do fully expect some more wins from jacob and i'm either way i'm glad that we got to fight him this season uh, if you guys enjoyed though and you want to see more content like this leave a like on the video and subscribe for more also become consider becoming a channel member for just a couple dollars a month you get some nice bonus content uh we have a video that should be live by the time this one goes up i'm not sure it depends on when i timed it for um so make sure you guys stay tuned for that shout out to our current channel members uh, i know that they're probably not updated as of the time of this video going live but that's okay uh, i'm getting this up well in advance anyway because i'm going on a 10-day vacation uh so shout out to our current members as the time of recording this being none other than zeke zero mia Ra sakura obo unless gadgets josh Aka ultra player incog m and vincent Wee, who is our bigger fan your guys support on the channel is greatly appreciated uh our next match i believe let me actually double check who our next match is against um because i'm definitely a little bit scared of just future weeks because we do need to really try and be very careful with our games going forward um our week six looks like it's against t-row t is a very terrifying coach i know he's doing really bad right now but t-row is a really strong player conceptually and he just has a good understanding of the game so this will be a very terrifying one to watch he also shifu rapid so we'll see you guys in the next match peace out guys